Hey guys, what is up? Welcome to my channel. For today's video, I'm going to be talking about my staple items from Sephora. So if you want to see what those are, then just keep watching. <laughs> Hi guys, if you're new here, my name is Morgan. I am a product knowledge enthusiast. I just love knowing anything and everything about all of the new makeup on the market and sharing my thoughts with you guys. And tis the season of the Sephora holiday event, which I thought would be the perfect time to film this video that I've been wanting to film for a long time. So every time I do recommendations for you guys, just because of the nature of my channel, they tend to be about newer products. So I wanted to do a video of products that I love for Sephora and have loved for years. This video goes along with any other recommendations that I do from here on out. So those ones, of course, are going to feature the newer items, but these are truly staple items that I have loved for years. And if you haven't picked these products up, I do highly recommend them if they sound like something that you are interested in. Literally been using these products for years. It was really fun to just put some old favorites on my face today. So let's go ahead and get started. We're going to start off with primers. I have two major primers that I absolutely love and would use every day for the rest of my life with no problem if I had to. The first one is the Smashbox Photo Finish Primerizer. Now I have the smaller size because actually one of you guys let me know that the smaller size was a better value than the full size and it's also a little bit better just because the makeup doesn't expire so you have less so then I can repurchase another one once I finish it up and not have to worry about the product expiring. But anyways, I have more normal to dry skin especially leaning more dry now that it is getting colder. This is my go-to primer for when I have more dry skin. What I like about it is it's very lightweight so it does sink into the skin very easy. So if you are looking for a lightweight but still very moisturizing primer, I highly recommend the Smashbox one. Another one is a little bit more heavy duty. I don't use this one quite as much but I definitely happen to use it more so in the winter time when my skin is much more dry. And this one is the Bobbi Brown Vitamin Enriched face base. This is a very popular product for a reason, but it's just a very thick facial moisturizer basically, but it applies really great before makeup because it does sink into the skin very fast. I just find when I need a really heavy duty moisturization before I'm applying makeup, this is a great way to go just because it sinks in very quickly, but it also is extremely moisturizing. And by the way, guys, I forgot to mention this before, but if you are a regular on my channel, you've definitely heard about these products before because like I said, these are all staples in my collection. So if you're a regular, there will be some repetition for sure. So let's move on to, I guess these are kind of like highlighty primers. I don't really know what to classify these as because I just use them for so many things, but I highly recommend the Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Flawless Filter. And you know I love something when I have it in more than one shade, especially when it comes to complexion. So I have the shade number one and I have the shade number three. This one's going to be a little bit closer to my skin tone. So you can use these for basically whatever you like. You can use them as a liquid luminizer, which sometimes I like to do if I want a really natural glow on top of my foundation. But normally what I like to do with these is apply them underneath my foundation. So today I actually use the shade number three because it's more skin tone like and I applied it underneath my foundation so that as the day wears on, the glow is really going to peek through. Now if I want something a little bit more highlighty, then I will use number one. But these are really fantastic. You can mix them into your foundation to get a glow. You can put them underneath to have a glow pop through or you can put them on top of your foundation to have more so of a liquid luminizer effect. So I love how versatile this product is and it really is a game changer if you like glowy skin. Moving on to foundations, I have two. Now the first one is a true luxury foundation. So I only try and purchase this when there is a sale going on, just like a sale right now. But this is my all time number one favorite foundation. If you watch my channel, you know this is the Dior Air Flash Foundation. I have mine in the shade 300. This is by far the best foundation that I have ever used. The finish is completely airbrushed on the skin. It wears beautifully and I just can't say enough good things about this foundation. The downside to it is I feel like I run through it so fast because it is a spray foundation and it is so pricey that it can really burn a hole in your wallet. So that's why I always recommend to get it during the time of a sale, which is why it's a staple recommendation for the Sephora events because it's an 
amazing foundation. It just, it's painful to pay for. It really is. The next foundation is the one that I am wearing right now. This is a heavy duty foundation. I recommend this for a working woman, somebody who has to wear makeup all day and it works really great in the summer or if you live in a more hot climate but you still want coverage. This is the Estee Lauder Double Wear Stay in Place Makeup. Now obviously I am not the discoverer of this foundation. It has been a classic for so many years ongoing but it is truly such an amazing foundation so if you're looking for something that is going to last all day this is a staple foundation in my collection that I highly recommend you look into I have mine in the shade 2w1 dawn like I said it's the one that I'm wearing now and it's not gonna go anywhere all day moving on to concealer I have a few concealers that I really enjoy but the one that's really a staple that I can foresee in my makeup collection for a very long time is the Too Faced Born This Way multi-use sculpting concealer I also love my Pat McGrath. I love my Giorgio Armani, but there's something about this that I find to be the most versatile out of all of those concealers. Just because it can work as a foundation, it looks beautiful all over the skin. It gives a pretty good coverage. I would say a full medium coverage, not necessarily quite full full. It's not like a tart shape tape, but that's what I like about it. It gives you a lot of coverage, but it's not drying. It's very moisturizing underneath the eyes. It stays put. It doesn't get creepy. It doesn't look heavy but it still gives you the coverage and it blends out like a dream. So if you're looking for a good, high quality concealer to purchase this time of year and you haven't tried the Too Faced Born This Way multi-use sculpting concealer, again, this is something I highly recommend. I use the shade Light Beige. Let's move on to face powders or setting powders. I actually have a powder foundation that is a staple for me in my collection. If you don't know, I am a teacher. Obviously things are a little bit different now, but when I was working in the building, I used powder foundation to go to work and because I am a physical education teacher I'm sweating I'm moving so I didn't want anything heavy to wear to work and I have fallen in love with the makeup forever matte velvet skin powder foundation it really smooths out the skin it gives you some coverage I like to apply it with the sponge that it comes with and it just makes your skin look really perfect and because it's a powder it's just really lightweight on the skin while I haven't had the opportunity to wear this recently this was my most use foundation last year for sure. Highly recommend this. As far as setting the face, I have to go with my Pat McGrath Lab Skin Fetish Sublime Perfection Blurring Under Eye Powder. Now I use this specifically for my under eyes, but I also like to use it in the T-zone as well. I have, well I no longer have it because it's broken, but I used to have the shade medium that I would use to set my entire face. I have never come across such a lightweight powder that also smooths. It's the most smoothing powder that I have in my collection, but it's really, really lightweight. It kind of feels like silica a little bit. It's so slippery on the hands, but it just gives you the most blurred, perfected skin, and it's amazing for the under eyes. So if you've been struggling to find an under eye powder specifically, this is a fabulous one, and it also works great all over the entire face. I do have two bronzers to share with you. These are two staple bronzers of mine. I'm gonna start off with an older one. This is super old. It's been out forever, but every time I use it, I fall in love with it. It has a nice glowy finish. This is the Too Faced Sweethearts Bronzer Baked Luminous Glow Bronzer in the shade Sweet Tea. For my skin tone at least, I find it to be the perfect shade and the perfect amount of luminosity. It's not the bronzer that I'm wearing today, but every time I wear this, I'm reminded how much I love it and I think to myself, gosh, this is one of my favorite bronzers. So if you are looking for a nice new glowy bronzer, I do recommend this. I'm so worried. This has been in the Too Faced line for so long. I don't know when they're going to to discontinue it but I really hope they never do it because it's one of the best bronzers. Another one this one is a little bit more luxury but I love it. It's the bronzer that I'm wearing today. I just feel like it's the perfect tone not too warm not too cool. Still shades the face but also gives it a little bit of warmth and blends like a dream. This is the Marc Jacobs Tantastic Bronzer. Again I'm very fearful that they might be discontinuing this because it is currently on sale at Sephora. I'm not sure if it's still available but last I saw it was still on sale so check it out because it's a great deal right now especially with the additional 20% off. It's just the perfect bronzer and it's a never-ending bronzer. You get so much product. I actually purchased this when it went on sale because I want a backup of it. I'm always suspicious when a product goes on sale so I really hope they are not going to discontinue it but definitely look into this. See if it's still available. It's one of the best bronzers. Blushes. This should come as no surprise to you. Always 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 
during these VIB sales if you're interested in an hourglass blush pick it up they have the best formula my favorite for every day this glowy pink cheek that I have going on is the shade luminous flush and you can purchase a full-size individual but they also have little mini sizes which are a better value they have a lot of great colors that you can choose from I'm just a big pink blush gal and depending on the time of year and the season sometimes they will have different blush palettes available as well this one was a blush palette from last year stock up on their blushes they have the best everyday blushes they have a very very subtle glow nothing intense it's just not a completely flat matte blush which can make your skin look dry and it's so lightweight and easy to apply as well they blend out beautifully they aren't overly pigmented but they aren't also under pigmented because there are sometimes where blushes you're like digging in to get it on your face this is perfect in my opinion and they just have the best blush formula and they're very very pricey so always take advantage of the sale moving on to highlighters <sighs> I just talk about these all the time but these are the Dior backstage glow face palettes in particular my favorite one is the universal this is the original palette that they came out with I think it has so many different tones in here that are so useful you have a gold you have a white and then you have a pink and then you have this really deep bronze shade currently just with the cool blue look that I'm wearing I'm actually just wearing the white shade which is really gorgeous and icy on the cheek it's very blinding but I think this is one of the best highlight formulas as well as the best values for what you're getting because Dior in my opinion has the best highlighter collection and highlighter range and so you're getting a great value for these Dior formulas I just highly recommend these they have come out with three more colors as well now so maybe you might want to pick a palette that kind of suits what colors you would go for more but as an OG what I would highly recommend is just the original universal one I also did want to bring attention to this hourglass palette again hourglass it really hurts your heart to buy some of their things because they are a very luxurious brand with luxurious <laughs> prices but this is the ambient lighting palette and what I like about this is you get three of their finishing powders in different colors so you can really test out the brand and what's important about hourglass powders is how they look outside in the real world swatching demoing it's not going to really do anything you have to really try them out on your face and wear them out to really understand what the powders do I would say to sum it up they give just an ethereal glow to your face an ambient look just as they are described and I love this palette because you get a little bit of everything in here as far as their best powders go and if you want just a really soft focus look on the skin I like this in particular because this I will use to set my face this I will use in the outer portions just for a hint of depth or as a bronzer topper as well to add some sheen and this one I will use on the high points of my face and the finish is just perfection okay so let's move on to eyebrows now I used to be such a die-hard ABH brow person but then I don't know I've switched over to benefit I think benefit has great product this is a time during the sale season to pick up your staples I feel like one of the products that I run through like water is brow products I absolutely love the precisely my brow pencil from benefit it is the thinnest tip I really love how much control I have with this I like that it's not too waxy but it's also not too creamy it really is the perfect consistency you can blend it out with the spoolie they have a great range of colors and while I love ABH I don't know it's just something about the benefit products I've been loving I also really love their 24 hour brow setter again I really feel like I'm betraying my girl ABH but I really just love the spoolie on here I feel like it really brushes out the hair in a way that a regular spoolie can't and it separates the hairs which makes your brows look more full and the actual gel itself is also really nice and reliable I just want to recommend ABH's brow line to you in general because I feel like different brows have different needs and whatever different looks that you like because I also really like the powders that Benefit has as well these are my top two favorite but just take a look and see what else they have that might fit your needs moving on to eye 
guys, let's talk about eye primers and eye bases. I will admit I am pretty lazy when it comes to my eye bases, but I do have some tries and trues for special events. And a staple of mine that I always have in my collection is the Too Faced 24 Hour Shadow Insurance. Now I will admit I'm a little bit of a cheater because I feel like I always get these samples whenever I purchase a Too Faced product. So I actually have not had to purchase a full size shadow insurance in a really long time. I just stock up with the give with purchases and I mean, hi, it saves me a little bit of money. But of all of the eye primers that I've tried, I really do feel like the eyeshadow clings best to this as far as lasting power. Now the reason why I'm never really focused on eye primers is because personally, I don't have a longevity issue. My eyelids are not oily, but if I know it's gonna be a long day or it is a special occasion, I go for this. I really think that this is the best. Moving on to glitter glue. I get asked all the time what glitter glue I use and I think a cheap alternative that I do recommend is the NYX. They do have a great glitter glue as well, but I use the Too Faced Shadow Insurance glitter glue. So this isn't something I ever really talk about on my channel, but I love a good glitter glue. This is what, first of all, glitter is going to stick to, but just apply this underneath your shimmers as well and this is going to make your shimmers pop. So if you're kind of new at cut creases, you want to give them a go, but concealer is too intimidating for you. Line the cut crease with glitter glue instead of concealer and this is also a great way to create kind of a softer more wearable cut crease as well but I really just love the way textured shadows and shimmers apply to this so this is a really good glitter glue that is a staple in my collection let's move on to palettes this is always the most exciting part and I definitely get the most questions during this time of year during the sale season what palettes should you pick up and personally I recommend to pick up the pricier palette. So Natasha, Denona, Vizzy, Art, and Pat McGrath are the brands that I'm going to share my picks with you guys. Charlotte Tilbury is also another good brand, but I do think the three that I mentioned are the ones that I want to talk about. So let's do Natasha, Denona first. We're going to first talk about what I am wearing on my eyelids today because this is a palette that I highly recommend. There are two different colors that Natasha has, but for some reason, one of them isn't available. But these are the original palettes from Natasha Denona and I genuinely feel like this is her best formula that she's ever come out with. Even though her formula now is absolutely amazing still, there's something even more special about her original palettes. I am wearing the 28 Purple Blue palette. Now the reason this is a staple for me is because it's the best colors and the best formulas. It's 20 times more gorgeous in person. Just trust that when you get it in person, you're going to be completely enamored by this palette. And the reason I say you should get it during the sale is because these are $240. So the 20% off is really going to count with these products. And when you get something small, the 20% off doesn't seem like much. The 20% off is going to make a difference for this product. Now they also have, like I said, a green blue, which is the one that I would recommend more, but Sephora does not carry that one. I don't think that the purple blue is for everybody. If you are a neutral gal. Oh my gosh, please don't buy this palette. Don't waste your money. But if you're looking for a good palette, you're not afraid of color. You are really interested in getting the best of the best from Natasha Denona. Highly recommend this one. I, uh, I'm so scared she's going to discontinue these because she never created another palette like these since. But they are so good. And by the way, if you do want a detailed tutorial on this look, make sure you're following me on Instagram. If I don't have the tutorial up yet, I did film one for Instagram. So just keep an eye out for that. So let's say you're not interested in the $240 palette. Totally understandable. I have two other options that are staples that I think you guys will really love. So both of these are $129, which is still pricey, but I really wanted to make whatever discount you get, whether that is 10, 15, or 20% to really count. And the first one is the gold palette. I've not talked about this one in a long time, but I really do think it's a great one to start off with when it comes to Natasha Denona because the colors are for more neutral lovers. You get a lot of different textures here so it's really going to introduce you to different ways that you can add dimension to your eyes if you're not as familiar with that. So I just love the textures. You do have some fun pops of colors as well. For a very very long time this was my number one favorite Natasha Denona palette. I don't think it's still the top runner here but it is still such a staple and I absolutely love the colors. I need to use this again very soon because it is gorgeous colors. I love this one 
one still. So if you're interested in this color story, this is a great one to go into as well. And then the last Natasha Denona that I would highly, highly recommend, especially if you're looking to take that plunge into Natasha Denona for the first time, would be the Metropolis palette. I'm not going to talk too much about this because this actually was in my recommendations video that I made this week. I mean, this is that 28 pan layout, just like the bigger ones that I told you. It's just they're half the size, which is even better. And you get just a really great array of colors. You get a fabulous formula. So if you're still a neutral wearer, but you do like some pops, you like to explore a little bit, this one will probably be the best one for you in my opinion. I would say of all of the Natasha Denona palettes I've recommended today, this is the one that I would recommend most to somebody who really wants to get acquainted with the formula. Let's move on to Busy Art. I have two staple ones and these are probably not going to be a surprise to anybody. Busy Art is so underrated in my opinion. They have some of the best shadow formulas but I just think they're underrated because they don't really appeal to the consumer market. They are more artistry based. The quality is impeccable and Sephora does carry their products and if you are looking for true good staple shadows look in the direction of Busy Art. Now I do recommend their original 12 pan palettes. These are the best of the best from Busy Art. They have a lot of wonderful petite palettes some that are of a better value for sure but if you really want the true Busy Art experience you're gonna have to look into the more pricey side of things. So these are I believe around $80 which hurts you but the two that I would recommend again you're paying for quality you're paying for performance with these the first one is the neutral mattes now with these 12 pants because they are for artists they are organized by the finish so the reason why I would suggest this as boring as it may look you are never going to need another mat again it says every mat you need for every day so if you are traveling I would highly recommend picking this one up bringing this with you and then bringing like some lid toppers with you this always is great to accompany with other palettes and it just has staple colors they're going to flatter every skin tone they're going to blend beautifully and these are essential colors that need to blend well to not mess up your look so this is a one way that i would go and then likewise this is kind of the shimmer version of the palette that i just showed you this is called sultry muse now i have a lot of vizier palettes that i love but i think for you guys this is the one that i would recommend most to you just because i'm super comfortable with these colors and i imagine Imagine that you guys are as well and it just pairs perfectly with the matte palette again these aren't a crazy innovative formula by any means these are just some great quality shimmers of colors that you would use on an everyday basis and if you get these two together you're good to go I just don't think busy art gets enough love because they do have such an impeccable formula and they make applying shadows really easy in my opinion those are the direction that I would go if you're a first time buyer and then finally, of course, Pat McGrath. Yes, this is definitely the question I get asked the most this time of year. What palettes would I recommend from Pat McGrath to take advantage of the sale? I would say definitely go for her big mothership palettes. Don't waste your time with the six pans or the quads. If you are a first time Pat McGrath buyer and you're looking for some staple palettes, go for a mothership palette, whatever color story speaks to you. Now, as far as my recommendation goes, the first one that I would recommend it's just the original Divine Rose palette and I was not moved by this one when it first came out but the longer that I've had it in my collection the more I've learned to appreciate it now it's gonna come in black packaging I did purchase a special edition packaging but the colors inside are the same and when this first came out I was actually very disappointed by it but I find myself reaching for this palette a lot it just has the best mauvey rosy everyday tones not a lot of the items in the Pat McGrath line are necessarily wearable so that's why I think Think this is a great way to start because to me Pat McGrath is almost like an artistry brand she doesn't make products really to be wearable so as a way to step into that artistry side I think that this is a great way to go and the colors are stunning the quality is impeccable I find this to be a great multi-use palette because the colors are great as blushes and highlights on the face as well so if this looks like a color story you would be interested in I think that this one is a great one to start with Ooh, or just as good and now I will admit I like this one better than the Divine Rose. This one is more my style but I think that the original Divine Rose is more a lot of other people's style but if you are more my style go with the Bronze Seduction. I believe this one is still probably my favorite palette from Pat McGrath. This palette has a lot more richness than the Divine Rose.
rose you could still get some very neutral looks but i also love all of the special shades in here as well because they really can make an everyday look turn super glam so for me i feel like this is the palette that you can get the best pat mcgrath experience with without having to wear crazy colors and you can glam it up you can glam it down whatever you want to do so those are definitely the two palettes that i highly recommend most to those getting started right, so i have one more product to share with you as far as eyes and it is a mascara and this is the pat mcgrath labs fetish eyes mascara now i have very sparse short straight lashes so i'm not a big mascara connoisseur don't ask me about mascaras i don't know i'm not the best skinny pig for that but this is a mascara that i really do feel like thickens and lengthens my lashes i feel like it builds very well on myself now that being said if you hate a flaky mascara this does flake so i know a lot of people hate flaky mascaras this will flake on you for me it just makes my eyelashes look so good that i put up with it i always like to purchase a new one of these a fresh one while there is a sale to keep these in my collection because when i need my lashes to look good i go for this all right so now it is time to move on to lips everything i'm pulling out here is completely predictable if you watch my channel at all but we're gonna start off with a lip mask so i love the laneige lip sleeping masks i've accumulated quite a few different flavors today i'm just showing you the newest one that i have this is the lemon sorbet i like this one because the scent is not overpowering at all it is very very faint but i have not had a lip moisturizer that made my lips as soft as this does i like to apply this before i start with my makeup application so that it can sit and by the time that i get to my lips my lips are nice and supple and ready for product this is of course a lip sleeping mask so i also like to apply this before bed so if you have a chap lipped problem i really do like this lip mask it's my favorite lip liners i have two formulations that i can recommend to you guys so i recommended this in my most recent recommendations but the charlotte tilbury lip cheats i just really love the colors that she has my most used two are super size me so if you like more of a pink lip liner go super size me and then iconic nude this is the one that i'm wearing today this is more of a cooler neutral brown toned lip liner which really does shape the lips i really love it so these are kind of the two colors that i tend to wear the most and the charlotte tilbury formula feels pretty much identical i would say to the pat mcgrath formula which is the other formula that i'm recommending so i would suggest finding colors that you like better these both perform equally as good i will say though i do think that if you have really dry lips the charlotte tilbury is a bit more moisturizing and creamy whereas the pat mcgrath they kind of dry down a little bit more so i think these stay put a little bit better and i mean these differences are minuscule but if i had to tell you the differences between the two that would be it i have quite a few pat mcgrath lip liners as well my favorite shade is contour which is very similar to iconic nude if you like that cool tone brown vibe i also use buff a lot which is a little bit more of a rosy pink and then for a little bit more of a neutral nude pink done and done is the color that i wear the most so both of these lip liners you can't go wrong i will just say whatever colors you like the best i would go for one of these two formulas lipsticks my all-time favorite lipsticks and lipstick collection is from charlotte tilbury her kissing formula in particular is the best in the game in my opinion her kissing formula is a sheen finish it's a cream lipstick that has a little bit of shine to it i have four colors that are in my regular rotation now i'm always wearing charlotte tilbury lipsticks you can't go wrong with any color really but here are the ones that i wear the most just as far as my recommendations go the first one is nude kate which is my favorite nude nude it's the one that i'm wearing today so you can see super nude but if i'm looking for a little bit more depth in my lips then i will go for hepburn honey now i do believe hepburn honey has been renamed to i think it's uh -huh honey or something with the word honey in it so they still do have this color they did just end up changing it but it's just a little bit deeper than nude kate these are my most used lipsticks from charlotte tilbury highly recommend those two but i also have been loving more pinky lips lately so i've been grabbing for pillow talk quite a lot and this is a classic shade from charlotte tilbury so a lot of people have this one so if you're looking to get started into charlotte tilbury lipsticks pillow talk is a classic and then i also really like for a nice pinky look is in love with olivia this isn't like a nude color or anything but it just adds color to your face brightness to your face 
and it just makes your lips stand out. So it's like a your lip color but better type of shade. And then finally, my last Sephora staple that I'm sharing with you guys are Pat McGrath lip glosses. Now, I love my Fenty lip glosses. Those are staples too. But as far as luxury, what to spend during the sale, I would say invest in some Pat McGrath lip glosses. These are the most creamy, shiny, delicious lip glosses. Honestly, I think I do like these better than Fenty. So my three most used shades. So for something very, very light, I enjoy Dare to Bear. I feel like the finish and gloss this gives on the lips is more than even the other ones. And then for the nude lip that I wear all the time, I love Faux Real. This is what I'm wearing today over Nude Kate from Charlotte Tilbury. She just has the best formula. It's not sticky, but it still is thick so it stays on the lips. It has a really good wear time. For my more pinky lips that I've told you guys that I like, I really love Divine Rose Lip Gloss, but again, she has a lot of really cool, amazing shades. These are just the three that I wear the most, but I don't even know that they're my favorite because she has so many at once, but these just go with the other colors that I wear the most. All right, you guys, so that is all I have for today's video. Those are all of my staples that I love to buy and repurchase from Sephora, so I hope you guys enjoyed with this video. I hope you found it helpful. If you aren't subscribed to my channel already, I would absolutely love it if you would consider taking the time to do so. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye guys.